If you serve in the military, you know the drill, check your individuality at the door. But some soldiers are pushing back on the U.S. Army's new regulations on personal grooming. African-American service women say the new regulations are biased because they ban popular hairstyles like larger braids and twists that work well with their hair texture. Members of the National Association of Black Military Women want the Army to reconsider the regulations, and the Department of Defense has agreed to a full review. Still, the hair ban has raised a sensitive issue among African-American women, something my next guest knows well. Tina Opie is a Babson College professor who writes for the Hair, the hair as Identity blog. I love it. Welcome. So Thank you. the Hair as Identity blog. Yes. That, that's great. How did you get, how did you get onto this issue? So actually, as an African-American woman, hair is very personal to me. So I've had everything from relaxed hair, which is chemically straightening my hair, to dreadlocks, to twists, to my short afro that I now wear. And when I moved to Boston, actually, to start my job at Babson, I went on a journey to try to find hair care products. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find anything. And so I decided to start blogging about sort of the experience of having natural hair in Boston Thousands of people started to read the blog, loved it, and so I then turned it into a full website. Okay. So now, this particular issue, because I heard Chuck Hagel, Secretary of Defense, yes. say that he's definitely on to reviewing it, but give me an example of some hairstyles that don't work. Okay, so according to the policy, specifically, dreadlocks and twists are banned. And just for the audience, in case they don't know the difference, mm -hmm. dreadlocks are sections of hair that are allowed to grow so that they intertwine, so that it's very difficult to remove them. Twists are similar to braids, and where braids have three sections, twists have two, and you put them together, and you have a hairstyle. Okay, and so, so those are been. All right, so I want to put up three highly identifiable <laughs> African-American women. Take a look at their hairstyles mm -hmm. and tell me would, would, would it, would, would, which one of these would pass muster. So actually... The Miss Rice. That would be all right. That would be okay. What about Michelle Obama? First Lady Obama would be okay. Yeah. Now, what I will add is both of them would probably need to secure their hair back into a bun. Ah. Uh, Miss Goldberg's hairstyle, which is dreadlocks, are absolutely prohibited. Yeah. Okay. And so... Would you, ad would you advocate for the dreadlocks, or you just want some... Because that, I can understand why... The military wants a, a uniformity, a very neat appearance. You know, some people, dreadlocks can, can get a little bit wild. So what's interesting is I'm not here to advocate for a particular position. What I would like us to do, though, is examine the standards by which these policies are determined. Mm -hmm. So when you say that, I think the particular language in the policy that was offensive uh, was that there are certain hairstyles that are viewed as unkempt and matted. I see. Matted, and that's, yeah. yes. So that seemed to be directed towards a particular group. And so you had the Congressional Black Caucus, the women of the Congressional Black Caucus, who were actually writing to the Secretary of Defense complaining about yeah, that. Yeah, I saw that. I read that policy. And they also were very specific about the cornrows, how much scalp you could show, mm -hmm. and in what direction the cornrow went. So they do allow cornrows. Yes. But it, it all has to go in the same direction or something like that? Right, and I don't know if you all have a picture of this. I don't know if you've ever seen the move, the, the TV show Fame. Do you remember that show from a long yeah, time ago? Yeah. Leroy was a male character who had cornrows that yeah. were, I think, appropriate for the military ban. Most of the women I know don't find that to be a particularly attractive yes. hairstyle. Um, so they're not necessarily thrilled mm -hmm. about that opportunity. Do you find that it's an issue for African American women in general when they go to the workforce they feel like they have to straighten their hair or do something that's more conforming because your hair texture is just different, you know? Right. So absolutely. I've interviewed many women and several of them have said I would love to try to wear my hair in its mm. natural kinky mm. afro textured uh, way but I don't think they, whoever they <laughs> is, will approve of it. Yeah. And so they continue to relax their hair or straighten their yeah. hair. What a hassle. Yeah, it is a little bit of a hassle. Um, and as someone who has relaxed my hair, I can tell you there, there is, there's a freedom in being able to embrace your natural mm -hmm. hair. What about extensions? Because a lot of African-American women, in, in fact, Michelle Obama has done it. Th those are allowed. So extensions that's are allowed? Extensions are allowed. Isn't that surprising? Yeah. Extensions and wigs as long as they conform to the policies, are 100% permissible. You can wear a wig? Yes, you can that, wear that, a wig. That, that seems it would be you know, problematic if... Oh, what do I know? All right. <laughs> <laughs> you great, great discussion. All right, Tina Opie, thanks for calling this to our attention. Appreciate Thank you. It.